And if atheism is evil to the core, the Bible says a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Meaning, if there is a little bit of leaven in bread, not even a, a just a tiny speck of leaven in the entire loaf of bread, then the whole loaf of bread is leaven and it cannot be used. Let me break that down a little bit further. If there's a little bit of yeast in the, in the bread, it's spoiled for use. One bad apple spoils the bunch. One rotten, rotten seed can cause all of the rest to go bad. So if atheism is evil, if it is the scourge of humanity, if it is all of the things that Christians have said that it is, then why would you want to take the little leaven from the atheist? Is it because it's life-saving? Is it because, oh, it doesn't matter. They're human. Their belief system doesn't matter now when it, be, when it comes down to me needing something for my child. So, if we can realistically say, yes, I can be a friend with an atheist without bringing up religion. And yes, I would freely accept an organ from an atheist to save my child. Then why do we attack them? You see, this is where atheists find strength in their argument when they say we're hypocritical. They find strength because uh, they, they, they say you'll accept one part of something but not the other part. We have to be even keeled across the board. Either we accept them and live our lives in a manner in which is pleasing to God, yet acceptable to those who come. Or we, 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 we draw the line in the sand and we walk strong as soldiers of the Lord, chasing more people away from God than bringing people to Him. Here is my goal. I am a Christian, 120%. I love the Lord with all of my heart. I love Him so much that I want people to come and ask me, hey, what is that light in you? I don't want to. I don't want to have to walk up to people and say, "Hey, let me tell you about my God," because no, 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 no. The Bible does not say that. The Bible says go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. And if they will not come in, shake the dust off your feet. So how can I compel someone to come in that, that, that rejects me? I live my life in a way that makes them feel like, hey, I need to be around that guy. And I need to ask that guy, hey, what is it that has helped you to go from A to B? And if I am a welcoming kind of person, not castigating, not judging, but just living my life being me, eventually, maybe, someone will say, tell me something about it. But if they don't, that's not for me to trip on. It's only for me to show them kindness. Loving kindness. And lastly, I'm running out of time here. Let me see how much time I got. Woo, 12 minutes. I'm way ahead of time. Uh, the next thing I want to say, and, and huh, nobody answered the question about love your neighbor. Nobody answered the question about love your neighbor. Then lastly, let me say this. There's this question of hell that keeps coming up that we have to tell people if they don't believe in God that what the consequence is. I believe the Bible 110% from front to back. But the problem I have with that theology 
and that that is a theology. It is. It's not. It's nothing more than a theology. The theology of uh, uh, of uh, eschatology. You're 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 taking a person's eventual resting place, and you're basically casting it upon them. How do you get people who don't believe in hell to run from hell? How do you get people who don't believe in a God to accept a God that they may be free of his judgment? Which, by the way, is one of the reasons why they don't believe him, because they cannot believe that a God, a loving God, would send a person to hell and burn forever. How, how do you rightfully open up dialogue? And, and, and No, how do you go before the Lord at the end of time and say, Father, I had 20,000 people in front of me and I told them all they were going to hell if they didn't believe in you. And 15,000 of them ran away from you. And 5,000 of them came. But there's a guy next to you saying, Father, I stood before 20,000 20, people and I showed them love. And 19,000 of them came and said, you know what, I want to know about this guy. How do you get a people who don't believe in a God or the hell that he supposedly created? How do you get them to, to, to accept that theology, that logic? That's just like you telling me this pen is your salvation. And unless you write with it, you will never be free. But I believe that pencils are better. So I'll never write with that pen because pencils are better. You have to get me to believe that the pen works before you can get me to see that the salvation is in it. We have to get atheists to believe that God works before we can get them to believe in him. And if for some reason they choose not to believe because we as Christians have failed to answer their questions, which is what has happened, then we can't, can't beat them upside the head. We are doing more wrong than we're doing good. I've talked to atheists and a lot of them, a lot of them have said, if you could answer my questions and show me some kind of proof, then maybe I'd believe in your God. And the first thing we do when we're confronted with the hard questions is we say, you gotta have faith in order to believe that. To an atheist, a Christian saying you gotta have faith is just like somebody saying, it makes no sense. To them, our faith is not the answer. They are the kind of people that need to touch something, that need to feel it, that need to look at it, that need to logic and reason with it. And there is nothing wrong with that. We just have to figure out a way of showing them proof. And the best way to show them proof is to live our lives and not be such judgmental people. Okay, so I think we've done what we needed to do here. We've discussed what we've needed to discuss. Come, let's sit as brothers, Christian and atheist alike, and reason together, one with another. I would like to open up a, a dialogue and open up a room and stick him entitled Atheists and Christians Round Table or something like that. And let's just see if we can talk for 35 minutes to an hour without fighting. Let's see, can we learn from one another in that time? Look at somebody and say, I feel a break. Peace out. Coming your way. Tell him it's a mighty move of God. And it's going to change your day. Come on, clap your hands right there. Yeah.
goes like this. <laughs> 